Hey guys, I'm making good progress on my latest Predicta 21 inch chassis. It got me thinking this is time for a good little excursion into a side project that I hope will really pay off. You've probably seen me, if you've been watching any of my videos, struggle to power these chassis up on the workbench because they have the huge 21 inch picture tube with the plastic housing and cables you have to run up to this. Um, few issues. One, it is big and heavy. Two, I don't want to risk damaging them up on the workbench and having to take them out of the cabinet and all that. Uh, and three, the, the cables are awkward to hook up and then if you have to troubleshoot to flip the chassis over and all that while it's being handicapped because it's stuck to these shortish cables. So what can you do? Well, a solution was devised way back in the day with one of these guys. Let me clear some room off so you can see it better. There we go. What is it? It is a telechuck. You may have seen me use this on a few projects over the years. I have two of these. One that's in great condition, and that's the one you've seen me use. This is the other one. It's falling apart. It's in miserable condition. What are these? It's a pitcher tube and a yoke with a bunch of clip leads on the end. The idea being, instead of having a big awkward pitcher tube up on your workbench, you take this with you, especially mid, late 50s TVs, uh, 21, 24, 27 inch pitcher tubes, they were huge and heavy and were meant to be mounted to the cabinet. They weren't supposed to come out with the chassis uh, because they were big and heavy and fragile, especially when they had 70, 90 degree deflection angles. Those things had long necks and they weighed dozens of pounds, so you didn't want to have to take them out or mess with them. So they invented these little guys. What's inside of it uh, is one of those little test CRTs. Uh, in this case, it's an 8YP4. Let's see, I've got a box for one up there. There's a family of three. The 5AXP4 is a four, the little round uh, pitcher tubes, 10, 12, 16 inch round sets. The 8XP4 is an 8 inch rectangular but it's the old base style the 12 pin the big the big guy and this is the last one of the family the 8 YP4 110 degree reflection angle just like Predicta's with the small little coin 8 pin base um, I have tried to put a Predicta yoke onto one of these and just use um, them as is it doesn't quite fit but also if you, uh, the yoke stays with the pitcher tube, it's inside the housing and all that. So just having one of these by itself isn't particularly useful. You need the yoke, you need um, high voltage lead and all that stuff. So back to this. It's one of those in a box with long clip leads so you can um, substitute for the set. However, predictors are an odd thing. Um, so typically you would use these, one of these you would hook up, say this, this is an adapter on the end of it, but you would go into your set and pull out where the picture tube plugs in and plug this guy in. Uh, so maybe you plug this right into the CRT base socket on your chassis. Predictors don't have that. They came up with their own plug uh, for the CRT, which is an oddball connector that I've never seen anything else use, and similarly for the yoke. So using an adapter like this would be useless. You would have to use alligator clips. And these aren't set up that way. They have alligator clips for the yoke, but not for the CRT base. For the CRT, you're supposed to use this with an adapter and find one that will work on your set. So since this one is falling apart, what I want to do is customize it just for predictors. So maybe put this on the base like it was originally intended, cut off this and put on the predictor plug. Take the yoke, cut off these and put on the predictor plug. So in other words, this would instead of being universal, this would be custom tailored to plug directly into a predictor. And I would use as long need, as leads as I think would be practical. This is probably long enough. I might go a little bit longer. The yoke. I would like to use a predictor yoke and maybe transplant it onto this. I've got a spare. 
However, I tried doing that a while ago, and this is the result. I had to rip the base off of this. Why? Predict the CRT um, doesn't have a base like the 8YP4 actually has this plastic cap on the base. Here's a better look at one. So it's a little baby pitcher tube. 110 degree deflection angle. But this is a first gen type. It still has a long neck and it has actually, I think it's an octal tube base on it. These only were made for a year or two, then they went to a shorter neck and they had a coin base on it. Or I don't know if that's the right term, but basically a base that looks just like a tube with no plastic cap on it. So when I tried putting a predictive yoke on it, which is expecting this, it was getting caught on this plastic lip. Um, so rather than mess with all that, uh, I'll try using the yoke that came with this. It's supposed to be universal. Um, it's in rough shape, though some of the leads have been cut off of it. And the plastic is starting to come apart a little bit. Um, but I'd rather mess with this than... Uh, <laughs> struggle to get a predictor yoke onto this guy, but if it doesn't work, I may end up being, that may end up uh, being what I do. These are pretty easy to come by. These are by far and away the most common universal test CRT. I think there's three or four of them lying around. Uh, the XP4s a bit harder to find. Uh, the AXP4 seem to be really hard to find, but you can use an 8 XP4 in place of a 5 AXP4. And it's just be a little bit distorted. Anyway, it's pretty confusing, you guys. <laughs> the point is, we're going to take this box and retrofit it, modify it, customize it, so I can plug this directly into a predicted chassis. Um, so, what happened to this thing? The glue joints failed, uh, and bits on the interior of the box have fallen apart. But I think it's all here. Came with a bunch of adapters too, which we aren't going to need. So I want to glue up the broken off bits. Uh, hopefully it's all here. Uh, fix up the yoke support, which is what this is supposed to be. Uh, ooh, this is a bit cracked too. Yeah, I have some good plastic glue. Looks like it's all there. Well, so maybe that bit, but well, it's going to get smashed. Fix that up. Uh, and. Uh, what we can do with this. These come up for sale occasionally. There is a version that has that round AXP4, 5AXP4. Those are pretty darn hard to come by. Uh, right, those versions of these used all three of those test CRTs. Again, this is the most common. Strange one doll is tapered and one is not. Hmm. So there's just, there should be a hole in a screw driven down the center of this one. Somebody whittled it. Maybe somebody attempted a repair a long time ago. It didn't go too well. I don't know. You'll figure it out. I glued and clamped up the uh, box for the telecheck, and while I wait for that to set up, Let's see if we can actually get this thing to work. Now, I thought, and I may still be using the yoke that came with the telecheck. However, I do have some spare predicta yokes, and the reason I didn't think I'd be able to use one is I couldn't get them on there. Uh, it turns out I tried a couple 21-inch yokes, and that's where I got into trouble. Uh, it's just uh, the opening is not quite large enough to make it over that base, but this one I believe came from a 17 inch set, or it's a slightly different type from a 21 inch set, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but if it, I'm going to tighten it down, and one reason I would really like to use this aside from it just, I know it's going to be compatible with the Predicta, is that the yoke that came with the Telecheck, uh, it does not have a collar that tightens around the neck of the CRT, it's supposed to be held in by the stuff that's falling apart inside of the telecheck box so it's another big plus for this so that is now on there securely 
All right, here is an adapter I rigged up. So, octal to this adapter to the button base type connector into the chassis. Uh, let's see. Yes, we do have continuity. We are drawing current. Dial lamp is lit up. Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, of course, the CRT filament's lit up, so everything else is lighting up. It has to be lighting up. Alrighty, we are on our way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had to switch G1 and G2, so I traced out the wiring, verified it with continuity checker on my multimeter, and I think I have it right. So I identified the two pins on this, this guy and this guy, heated it up, pulled the wires out, flipped them, put them back down the sleeves, and heated it up. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so it's working. We're getting video through all that good stuff. Uh, I think the sync circuits are. Uh, not functioning correctly, so I'll work on that next. But hey, as far as the test CRT project goes, yeah, this is going to work. Uh, next up, I'll uh, work on the dress lead and fitting this inside of the enclosure and rigging up a high voltage cap, probably. It seems to work okay without it, so maybe it's not strictly necessary. Uh, and as far as this goes, we're going to work on troubleshooting the sink separator. Alright, so this setup most definitely works and works very well. I'm very happy with the results. Now let's start thinking about buttoning this up inside of the telecheck. Uh, a few things. One, um, the high voltage filter cap. So rather than adding uh, an external ceramic capacitor, it occurred to me that a real simple trick you can do on these rather than putting on DAG conductive coating Throw a piece of aluminum foil on there. So that's what I did, is wrap some foil around about a quarter of the surface area and tape down this uh, little hoop. Uh, this may be an issue when I put inside the case, in which case I may need to cut it down or something. But that is enough. I've already tried it out, that works well enough. The other is or another thing is this high voltage connection. I mentioned about a, being a pain because you have to thread it through the hole in the side of the high voltage box and it's hard to get in the connection. I forgot there's a trick. You can go in from the back side. Rather than going through the high voltage box and threading it down in there and, and so on, you can just plug it in the bottom. I drilled out the bad plastic Flipped the dowel around, drilled a hole down the center for screws, and got this front all mounted up. But I noticed the front was really wobbly. It turns out that the only thing holding the entire bottom of this case on was the fabric. So I cut it away, tore it away, and glued and clamped up the bottom around all four sides. This cloth was already falling off anyway, so it's no great loss. Uh, now let's see what we can do on the inside. So this piece can slide back. 
Uh, the yoke is supposed to sit on it, but I already know that the uh, predicted yoke is larger than that, so I don't think it's quite going to work out. Similarly, there were blocks up top that uh, rested against the uh, the yoke. I had to bust those out because they were uh, pressing down too hard. All right, that's not so bad actually. Uh, the hoop has enough clearance for that for the grounding hoop. My makeshift uh, capacitor there for the high voltage. Uh, the yoke and the CRT base connectors all run out through this hole. High voltage here, and then the top simply comes down. Uh, looks like that cross piece is coming down right about the center of that piece of foam, which I think is all right. Just don't want to mush this little capacitor sticking out there. And then we just latch it up. Uh, I have another chassis in the works, uh, pretty far along on it. As soon as it is ready, we'll give this a try. With uh, the box all closed up, the lead length, I think it'll be long enough. I think it'll be long enough, especially with this high voltage. It's uh, plenty long. And then we can use that trick and just plug it in the base here. Uh, if I decide I need longer leads at some point, uh, I, can, I can extend these as, as needed. But uh, hey, that is a neat little solution. Way, way, way nicer than having to lug out... Uh, large fragile cumbersome 21 inch CRT so if any of you uh, are interested in doing this um, I can't guarantee the yoke yeah it, it'll work with the leads as as is it'd be nice to have another foot or so um, but even like this it, it's it's workable I can manipulate the chassis while the CRT is, is hooked up all right, so that w that was a success. Uh, turned out to be much easier than I thought it would be because I was able to use a uh, predicted 21 inch spare yoke. Um, it just it just works. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing this yourself, eight YP4s are pretty plentiful. I have five of them on eBay right now at various price points. Hold out, I mean, you, you should be able to get one for 25 bucks or less if you're patient. Uh these boxes show up far less often. There's one right now, I think he's asking 125 bucks. It's in much nicer condition, but I think it's still a little high. Um, and if you're going to use the predictor yoke, you're going to have to modify it anyways, because it won't fit in there. And it's, well, as you can see, <laughs> it was pretty flimsily made. Um, so if you want to do this on a budget, if you have a spare predictor yoke, just get yourself an 8YP4. Do what you need to do to get that yoke onto it. Uh, you may need to heat it up or something uh, to get it over the base. I had to try several before I found one that would slide all the way down without getting hung up on that uh, big light base. Uh, you'll need an adapter for the base, uh, which you could cobble together if you don't have the one that, that comes with this guy. And I've there are several on eBay right now, just the adapters, just this guy. So they, they are out there. Uh, if you don't have a spare predictor yoke, I imagine any 110 degree deflection yoke could be made to work with a little bit of tinkering. Uh, otherwise, it, this this is uh, a success uh, and it works quite well. And um, you could, I could use this on other sets too if I uh, instead of using these, I uh, used alligator clips or, or something. I mean, that's how this was originally intended to to do or be used. They are handy for sets with larger pitcher tubes, for sure. Hope you enjoyed this look at experimenting using a uh, 8YP4 in a predicted chassis. Thanks for watching. Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis. Take your